Hi folks, hope you're okay. It's good to be with you. Love to everybody out there. I just want to share with you an article. And you can go and read the article for yourself because there's so much in it. Um, my name is Jason Burns. You can look me up on jasonburnspreacher.com. You can look me up on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, but I've been increasingly concerned about people pumping annihilationism. The belief that we'll just die and that's it. There's no judgment. There's no eternal punishment. No hell. And um, I want to bring to your attention this article. And uh, it's called The Destruction of Hell. Annihilationism examined by Jeff Spencer. The destruction of hell, annihilationism examined by Jeff Spencer. It's in the Christian Apologetics Journal, Volume 1, Number 1, Spring 1998, Copyright 1998 by Southern Evangelical Seminary. But the title of the paper, and there's over 16, 20 pages, it's called The Destruction of Hell, so you can type this in, The Destruction of Hell, Annihilationism Examined by Jeff Spencer. I'm just going to read a few quotes. Annihilationism has become a fire that is burning throughout the hallowed halls of modern religious scholarship. For instance, several non-Christian religious groups such as the Jehovah's Witnesses hold to some form of this view as well as some evangelical Christians such as John Stott, Clark Pinnock, etc. So this belief in annihilationism is growing apace. The annihilationists use the moral argument that they say that you know it's immoral to punish people forever. And the article in here says, well, Because the, the, the annihilation is saying, you know, finite sin. They've only sinned a finite, limited sin. So why should they be punished forever? But uh, the argument rejoiner to that is, well, no, it's infinite sin. When we sin, it has infinite implications. It's not finite sin, it's infinite sin. Okay, so that's the moral argument that they use. Linguistic argument. Uh, arguments. An Irish also, an Irish is, an Irishist also point to the fact that several key terms used in the Bible passages about the fate of the unbelievers should be understood to referring annihilationism. Annihilationists assume words like perish, destroy and cut off indicate utter annihilation. And, it, and this article goes in depth examining Pinnock and John Stott. And um, so he gives some rejoiners, some replies back to the uh, annihilationists. The moral argument the eternal punishing of the unbeliever is hell also maintains the justice of God because the eternal punishing of the unbeliever in hell also maintains the justice of God because contrary to the opinion of Stott and Pinnock, it is the punishment that fits the crime. Even though the sin was committed in time, it warrants an act, eternal punishment because the sin was against an infinite holy God. Sister thematic theologian William J. Shedd aptly states, it, endless punishment is rational because sin is an infinite evil. And he goes on to give the moral argument. So you, you'd have to read this article, uh, which I'm going to just... Answering the linguistic arguments. As seen above, to the annihilationist, the words used to describe the fate of the unbeliever, such as destroy, perish, consume and cut off, indicate a total annihilation of the unbeliever. This claim can be shown to be false. For example, Robert Murray in his book Death and the Afterlife answers the claims of the annihilationists by rightly pointing out that they simply assert that these terms mean annihilation. 
neither through nor those who follow him offer any lexicographical evidence of e or exegetical material, but starting from their unfounded assumptions that these words mean annihilation, they always claim the authors were conditional immortalities. They assume that any piece of literature which uses these words automatically teaches conditionalism. So, we'll finish there because you can go and read the article because it's quite deep. So what he's saying is, words like destroy, perish, the annihilationist reads them and says, no, this means annihilationism. And what he's saying is, no, these words, actually, if you look at the Greek and the Hebrew, actually, the Greek and the Hebrew don't actually support your interpretation of the meaning of these words. That's what he's saying. And he does a good job in looking at these words and showing that they don't mean annihilationism. But to get that, to believe that, you're actually reading your annihilationism into the text. And, and this is what the annihilationists do. They give a few verses and it seems on the surface that the verses teach annihilationism. But what you need to do is go and look at the Hebrew and Greek. When you go and look at the Hebrew and Greek, it doesn't actually conform to what the annihilationists annihilationist are actually saying. Alright. So... Go and read this article. Uh, if, you, if you're troubled about annihilationism and you want a good article that will give you some basic arguments against them and give you um, a, a starting point in dealing with this issue, um, get this article. It's The Destruction of Hell, Annihilationism Examined by Jeff Spencer. S-P-E-N-C-E-R It's 20 pages, it's quite deep and it's quite in-depth article. But I would encourage you to go and read it, meditate on it, it will really help you. To deal with any believers that are struggling with this issue, uh, it will help you uh, to deal with it. So thank you for listening and God bless you.